Well, that was exciting. Uh, apologies. No idea what happened there. But my computer just decided that restarting was a really good idea. Um, and, and yeah, that was kind of nuts. Um, do not know what happened. Not going to worry about it too much, but um, was certainly a bummer. Um, uh, so I'm still sorting a few things out. Okay, right. We were... Oh, actually, I've got too many more windows open than I needed. Yeah, let's close you. Um, yeah, so we were at the question mark doesn't work here. Um, so uh, I will probably just unwrap. I don't see a good reason not to. That fails, the test will fail. Um, and that seems reasonable. And it lets me move on. So, okay. I think that is a useful thing. And um, now if we rerun the tests, they pass. Okay. So that's awesome. So we need to check that the packet number parses correctly and that the data is whatever's left over. So um, fun parse packet number uh, let bytes back you eight back bang three five um well we could just do this and let result equals data try from bytes as slice dot unwrap and I want to assert bang, assert equal actually, assert eq bang that result dot packet number is eight times two fifty six plus nine. Boom. And that seems to be working. Let's run the tests over here just to be paranoid. Yep, that was good. And actually, if somebody gave me a thumbs up or something just to confirm that I, I'm back and you're here and all of that, um, uh, that would be super awesome. I, It looks like everything's good, but... And I, there seem to be people listed, but I, yeah. Understanding Twitch and, and what it thinks is happening is always a little confusing. Um, oh, that, that didn't get run because that didn't get marked as a test. So actually my um, claim that I, the test passed, well, wasn't wrong, but it wasn't helpful. Okay, now the test passed. And that seems to be good. Um, and do, 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 do. so then I guess we just need to test that the data is in the data spot. Um, FN, oops, bang, not bang, Octothorpe test. Um, FN uh, extract data. Let bytes back u8 back bang three five eight nine three two zero. Um, let result data try from bytes as slice dot unwrap. Uh, 
assert EQ bang. So now I'm going to want to assert that the um, make a note here could confirm in the comments that I'm actually back online that would be great um, so yeah if you're if you can give me a thumbs up or something that really would be spiffy because I have no actual feedback that this is working and it makes me anxious um so i want to assert that result dot data is going to be vec bang three two zero yeah so I want the data field to be the remaining bytes here. Confirm that the tests all pass and they do. That's a happy thing. And I have one more. So I had 16 before. I have 17 now because, yeah, that's a lot. Okay. So that's nifty. I think we have the data. And we have checked the length. We've confirmed that it is a data packet. Um, you know, I might put a dot not here. Because th this is another place where two explanation marks really isn't super helpful from a readability standpoint. Um, and then check the file ID, check the packet number. We have checked that it's whether it's the last packet and the data. I think we've done everything that I need to do here from a testing perspective. Um, and I think actually I will. We come back up to here. I do think I'm going to put a dot not. which you said needed to be a crate. Uh, oh, import std ops not. I uh, wonder if that's going to be, oh, come on. Std ops not. There we go. Pewing. Now the tests will still pass. That's a happy thing. Um, so I think that's actually totally good. And I'm a happy camper. Um, so I'm going to commit what we have here. So we, the main thing we did is we implemented parsing U8 to a data and adding all the tests. So that's really what we've done here. Um, uh, implement parsing uh, U8 as data packet. Um, also includes a pretty reasonable set of tests. Boop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Now, I don't know if I want to extract all these tests into their own file. I think Azitsu suggested that if you were sort of in the neighborhood of 100 lines, it probably made sense to move to another file. And we go from 102 to 245. So we're a little over 100, but not a lot over 100. 
Um, so, eh, I don't know. Um, um, yep. I was just checking on my phone that the stream was still here, and the stream does seem to be here, so I'll stop worrying about it, and we will um, press on. Um, yep, yeah, well, st I still seem to be here. So, um, so I think that that gives us the packets. Now, we're going to need to receive the packets and parse them into header and data packets. And then we're going to have to put them somewhere. And so the question now is, with half an hour left, do I start with the... UDP side of things and actually receiving stuff and making packets out of them or do I continue with the more data structure side of things and create something that like assembles packets into data structure -y kinds of things and do, 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 do. um not sure what my best bet there is. Got half an hour. Maybe I will go ahead and... Hey, you're back. Uh, you missed the excitement. My computer completely crashed. Um, uh, like, complete restart. And... Uh, um, so I, you're the first sign of life since I've been back on. Um, we weren't gone long, but we were gone long enough. So it was weird. Um, so I think that the, the packet stuff is done. Um, and if we run the tests, we've got um, pretty good tests for header and data um, packets. And so uh, and I committed that. Um, and so now I think I was trying to decide whether it made sense to um, start with the Tokyo stuff that was actually reading packets, UD, receiving UDP packets and turning them into these kinds of packets or focus on the data structure side of things. Um, I think I'm going to actually do... Um, the Tokyo side of things um, in this last half hour. So I think I want to have a do something with my main and actually get the networking side of things going um and convert a bunch of packets to packet, well, a bunch of things that come in to my packet data type um, and confirm that that's actually doing something. So that's, I think, where we'll head. So um, I think that somewhere here, I think I have like Tokyo UDP socket. Haha, -ha, look at that. Um, so that's for being a server and we want to be a client so we're going to want something like this and actually do i have tokyo in my cargo i do not so I need to do that. Um, and am I going to need to bring in, so I'm going to have to have the net feature as well. Wah, wah, wah. Cargo. 
add Tokyo minus minus features net boom do 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 um la 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 as we wait to download the internet i didn't think about the fact that tokyo is going to be a large um could well be do we need multi-threaded actually we're not probably doing anything multi-threaded on the client side we could but it's actually unless you got a lot of um unless you had a lot of files uh and you wanted to process them separately then that might make sense but i don't think we need a lot here um oh and so the multi-thread is necessary for the runtime and then the macros do i need the macros for things like um this thing here i might i don't know so we'll add those um now can i if i were to just add some features here multi-thread and Tokyo macros. Does that work? Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, it's just macros. Oh, you're right. I have to do that too as well. No, I didn't like that at all. I'll just edit the thingy. Attempting to figure out the um, syntax is probably not worth the trouble. Um, so I wanted RT multi thread and just macro. And now it's going to contemplate its navel and hopefully when it's done contemplating its navel, we will have um, working stuff. Doodly doodly doo. Crate has not yet been built because it's still thinking. Da 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 da. There we go. Okay. Um, so actually thinking about it. Oh. So there are extensions that I would like to have. Better Tomal. Oh. Okay. We could do that. And then in theory that would make doing stuff here a little better. Cool. Um and now, thinking about it, which if I'm not going to use threads, I don't really need Tokyo because nothing's actually async. Although having a wait, well, but this is just always going to always having a wait right after it. I don't actually need 
the threading stuff, arguably. Hmm. Well, I'm going to actually just go ahead and live. Um, oh, there is a crates extension. Uh, oh, and you can choose things. Oh, that's nifty. I'll take that. Thank you. So many toys. Things to play with. Um, and so then, oh, yeah, look at that. Wow, that's kind of cool. And so it'll show me if things are out of date. And, oh, that's kind of nifty. Like that like that a lot um so i'm going to go ahead and leave it with tokyo and we'll just call that a thing um now uh the actually if we come over here the i've got a directory java server lib that has a jar file of an implementation of the server um, in it. And uh, so I'm going to actually start that off in another terminal. Um, uh, segmented. So if we actually sort of run this thing, it'll have a server to hit. And the socket we need is uh, specified in that's three one. There we go. I think it's six oh three. Oh no, that's not the right one. Is this the? Is that the? I got two of those open. Oh, I put it over here, so I wouldn't have trouble finding it. Um, so I think it's 6031. Oh, maybe we don't even say what the port is in the write up. Doesn't look like it. So I think it's 6031. Um, so close you, close you. So localhost 6031. Um, and whoa we're binding we don't want to bind what did i do uh i thought we didn't do i don't want to bind so I just want to connect. So I don't need that bind line. Um, that is there, I think, for other purposes that we do not need to deal with. So we're going to deal with localhost 6031. And we will connect. Oh. Oh, it needed. Oh, that's interesting. It needed us to bind to an address to get a socket. And then we could specify a remote address. Huh. That's interesting. That's very interesting. In Java, we were able to just connect to a remote client and not have to think about um, uh, having a, a local, an explicit local port. Um, and so we're going to get a UDP socket by binding 
or from std from a previously bound UDP socket or an into uh, that turns it into a net UDP socket and a local address so really we do have to bind looks like well okay fine we will do that um, I suspect I need to be careful that this port not be the same as this port because I don't want to be talking to the client I want to be talking to the server so something like that and then remote it's going to be 6031 or 6013 I think um, So then we can connect. Our buffer is going to be 1028 because that guarantees that we have enough bytes for every kind of packet. We're going to receive uh, a packet on that socket. Len is going to tell us how many bytes we received. Um, and then this sends it back. I don't want to do that. Um, let's actually just make a packet out of that. So let's say we would say let packet equals, uh, byte the buff try into and it probably needs to import something to know what this is going to do. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Have to import things. Uh, lib knows about packets. So we ought to be able to import stuff here. I wonder why I'm not getting a quick fix. Use uh, is it crate packets. Um, packet and packet parser. Didn't like that. Oh, I need Rust segmented file client. Well, fine. Rust segmented file client. Oh, it may not be pub. Use the name in the cargo.toml. That's this thing here. Yeah, so that's what it was telling me. And these probably aren't public. Um, yep. Packet is not pub, and packet parser is not pub. Oops. Oh, those need to be pub because we can't include them if in a pub thing, if they themselves are not pub. That makes sense. Oh, no, 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 no. come on. Is that what I wanted at all? Where data go? There we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that should be on the mug for new developers. Um, when it doesn't work, go to the pub. Um, although, I don't know, that could lead to a lot of very, very weird uh, behavior. Um, 
So uh, that did not work. What if do I need that type? If I make that go away, type inside async block must be known in this concept. Can't infer. Yeah, because it doesn't know what it's trying to inf go into. Um, is this like a packet? No. Oh! Buff is an array. As slice. Let's get rid of that. And now now if I'd had my type here now it compiles because it knows what it's trying to make things into. And without the as slice, it didn't work because there was no from for arrays. Yeah, bingo. Good catch. Thank you. Um, and so that creates our packet. And so we would maybe want to print um, parsed packet is packet and we don't want that and we don't want that and oh this would need to be unwrap or something because this is like oh it's just that packet doesn't implement debug fine so data does and header does just the packet doesn't interesting um okay so that does a thing uh now uh cargo run Oh, oh, interesting. We do have to send, I think, to trigger the server to do anything, you have to send it a packet. Um, so you have to send it basically an empty packet. Oh, and um, so this is clearly just not doing anything. We also didn't get when we parsed we didn't limit it to the right number of bytes so we really wanted to say only do those bytes um, otherwise we were sending the entire buffer in and we would be parsing stuff we didn't need um, so I think before this loop, we have to send a message. And there was an example of sending a message. Um, right uh, here. So before we do anything, so after we've connected, oh, and actually we're going to want that buffer we are gonna send uh, our buffer we can just say we'll send the whole thing we don't really care 
Um, and we don't care about the response. We're just, ex the server, once it receives something, it triggers it to fly everything off. Oh, and I don't need as slice if I do that thing. Because that will force the conversion to a slice. Ah, yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, that's good. I like that. Um, so now I think maybe if we run connection refused weird so we didn't get a connection refused before so until I tried to actually send something it didn't actually fuss at us huh um <laughs> Am I remembering the port number correctly? That's a great question. Um, that uh, you don't want to wrestle with. Um, da -da -da -da. Can I find? the solution quickly or should we just call it quits uh, you, um, where is that is that here um, does this get into do we have any private no we do have one but that's not it is it in here um, aha, so that I think will have the port number. Oh, this is no, this is client at echo client server, not what I wanted at all. I wanted, hmm, no. Okay, we should stop. Um, I need to figure out what port that thing's running on and we're at five minutes away from the end. So I think quitting here, I think this is probably mostly right. And I think I probably just need to get the connectivity sorted out properly. Um, and uh, then we ought to be able to move forward. Um, and we're probably maybe only one session away from having this done, actually, because if this is, in fact, mostly correct, it's really just a matter of the bookkeeping of the packets as they come in, which really isn't that big a deal. Um, need some sort of map from file ID to the packets that will be part of that file and some way of sorting the packets and then writing them out to a file. I don't think that's all that hard. So maybe two sessions at most um, to finish this. That'd be kind of cool. So um, it is five minutes before the end of today's time. Um, I want to, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Ah, oh, stop it. Um, Thank everybody, obviously, for being here. As always, it is awesome and wonderful. Um, a reminder of the calendar situation, because it's chaotic at best. So there will be no streams Saturday, which I'm very sad about, um, but got obligations. Um, and I will be uh, at the West Central Climate Network meeting in the morning. And then uh, the local Prairie Light Film Festival starts on Friday. And I'll be going to see um, 
some shorts by a local filmmaker um, Saturday afternoon. So that's going to block that. Um, I should um, have... Uh, we should have the regular Tuesday and Wednesday... And Wednesday streams next week, but no Saturday streams on 8 Oct. Um, so maybe I'll try to squeeze in some one-offs next week like I did this week. To help make up for the fact that we'll have two no Saturday streams this weekend and next weekend. Because um, then there'll be a basically a two-week vacation. And I won't be here. And I will miss you. You're all wonderful people. But um, I'm going to go see my family. And it'll be very nice. And I will enjoy it. Um, so, uh, And I'll probably think too much about programming while I'm there. Because I'm kind of obsessive that way. So, uh, thank you all for being here. Oh, and I guess, um, let me use the Discord um, uh, URL uh, in case you want to do that. Um, uh, and I'll answer that question in just a second, Dio Solis. Um, Twitter... Nick McPhee, um, and yeah, that's probably the main things. So uh, feel free to uh, catch them. So thanks for joining and thanks for the question. Um, so um, the 10 second version, um, I'm a faculty <laughs> member at the University of Minnesota Morris, which is a small public undergraduate liberal arts institution in a rural town in western Minnesota um, and yeah we're a long way from everything um, we're like 45 minutes from a freeway or a motorway um, in European terms um, and three hours from an airport and yeah uh, to school we got about 1500 students um, Three and a half computer science faculty. We graduate 20 to 25 computer science students a year. Um, and I teach a little of everything um, because it's a small program. Everybody teaches a little of everything. Um, I am on sabbatical this year, so I'm not teaching classes. And uh, we had originally planned to go to Europe um, and um, do research with some people there. COVID complicated the world. That didn't happen. Um, so we're still at home. And um, I think it's a great little college. I've been there for 30, this is thirty my 31st year at Morris. Um, so I've been very happy. We weren't at all sure what we were getting, to, getting into when we moved here in 1991, um, but we're still here. And we're still liking it. So um, I will presumably retire here. Um, so we stayed home for sabbatical. And um, I have declared this my year of programming, where I'm going to, instead of doing more traditional research, put a lot of my energy into uh, expanding my programming skills and um, taking the time to learn some things that I have felt like I needed to know but didn't have time to learn. Um, and one of those was Rust. So uh, I've seen enough about Rust over the last few years to convince me that it was something I needed to probably learn um, or and wanted to learn. Like the, it had properties that interested me. Um, and um, so I've been using 
this is a chance to learn Rust. And rather than just sit at home and program on my own, I decided to also experiment with programming live in front of you wonderful people um, because uh, it helps hold me. Well, I really, I did it at first, I think mostly because it helps hold me accountable. It gives me a schedule and says, okay, you know, you need to do this. Um, in practice, actually, it has done that, absolutely. But meeting cool people and getting feedback and advice and suggestions, corrections when I'm stuck, that's been really cool. I have really, really enjoyed that a lot. Um, and I've gotten a lot of, you know, really helpful um, stuff from folks here. Um, and I absolutely uh, appreciate all the um, help and suggestions and feedback and ideas um, that folks have shared here. Um, this is where all the past stream videos are. If you're really bored and want to go back through the history, I uh, can't imagine it's the best way to spend your time, but hey, if it makes you happy, um, it's there. So this was episode 37, um, and they've all been two-hour episodes, so there's 74 hours of me programming. Um, I started by doing the rustling exercises, um, which I highly recommend if you're in, if you want to learn rust, I found the rustling exercises to be super useful. Um, uh, rust, rustlings. Um, yeah, these are, I found those to be really, really helpful. And the first few streams are me going through those and it's like, whoa, so many things I don't know. And people like Izitsu and Wagafa were like hugely helpful um, uh, in getting me sorted through those. Um, and then once I finished those, I've been building three different apps, uh, a web app using Rust and the UYEW um, uh, library, which is kind of like React. Um, so I'm building an app, a web app that way. I'm doing systems labs things that would be connected to our systems course. Um, uh, and um, uh, also doing an evolutionary computation, uh, implementing a simple genetic algorithm in Rust. Because I want to do comparisons between Rust and um, Clojure. So I've, my research is in evolutionary computation. I have been doing that mostly in closure for the past decade-ish. And I think Rust is going to be a whole lot faster. Um, and, but I want to see what, you know, it's how much less flexible it is. Um, the lack of any typing system in Lisp slash closure makes it a lot easier to crank some stuff out, but I think the runtime really is suffering. Um, so I'm wanting to be able to compare those things. Some early results suggest Rust is something like a hundred times, and I mean that literally, a hundred times faster than the um, uh, closure version of more or less the same thing. Um, we'll see if that scales uh, to more interesting problems or gets, you know, closer or farther apart. Um, so I'm doing that. So those are the three main apps that I'm working on at the moment. Um, and you showed up just the, you know, when things are getting really kind of confusing um, because I am going to be taking a two week vacation. Um, uh, and there's a bunch of rescheduling going on this week and next week because of various events happening. Um, I have taught a little tiny bit of Rust in the past. So in the systems lab course that we have, that programming has mostly been shell scripting, C, and Java. Um, 
And starting a couple of years ago, I added a really simple, like, hey, Rust is a thing, and we probably ought to know it more than we do and be using it more than we are, but I don't know it well enough to write, like, a really good lab in it. Um, so we've had a little bit of Rust in that one place so that students at least know that it exists. But part of the point of this was to figure out, like, is this something we should be teaching more seriously? Where should we be teaching it in the curriculum? I certainly at this point wouldn't start with Rust. I think that would be a little overwhelming. Um, but where does it sit in our curriculum? Um, and uh, should we be rewriting some of these labs? Like right now, the lab I was working on today, the students write that in Java. Well, should they write it in Rust instead? Um, I think is a really interesting question. And if they do, what does that look like? How much help do we give them? How much structure, um, uh, you know, do, do we provide? Yeah, so there's a, a, I need to write it myself first to get a sense of like how complicated it is and, and how we would want to structure the write-up. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> actually, I like bias. Bias is fine as long as everybody's honest and upfront about it. I don't have a problem with bias. Um, uh, so I would love to have your opinion. Um, uh, so those are the kinds of questions um, that I'm I'm hoping to become informed enough to have reasonable answers to um, by doing this. Um, and I think, I feel like there's just a lot of evidence that Rust or Rust-like things um, are, you know, that that's a direction a lot of people are heading. Um, I shared, do I still have it? Um, I think I closed that tab. Uh, yeah, I closed that tab. Um, but uh, yeah, in a stream yesterday, I adjust um, the one of the head engineers at Volvo was like, yeah, we should be using Rust instead of C and C++ for new projects. And it was like, okay, um, that's, you know, I think you're seeing a lot of that. Um, and I think we're moving in that kind of direction and that the students it would be to their advantage to have experience with Rust um, because of that. And even if in the end Rust doesn't say win the day, maybe 10 years from now there's a, a even better thing, whatever that looks like. I bet a lot of the ideas in Rust, especially I think the borrowing and ownership questions. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think you're seeing a huge move to replace things with Rust and the performance of those things is really impressive. So things like FD, which is a Rust replacement for find and oh, oh I, there's, there's a bunch of that kind of stuff. Um, and those things fly. I mean, they're really fast. Um, and it's sort of like, well, hmm. And I think that, um, I think one thing that Rust has going for it that's a, another huge win over, say, C, C++, is that Rust was built with threading and multi-core systems and parallelism in mind from the beginning. And I think these older languages where that was an afterthought in some ways just aren't just make it really hard to write that sort of code. And as we, you know, even our phones have multiple cores now, being able to write um, code that uses um, the hardware that we're building in a way that's safe and reliable, I think is like super important. Um, and I think Rust uh, has a, a large role to play there as well. I think other languages like Go also do that in a very different way, but um, I think there's a lot of nice things there. But um, uh, I think that 
the memory management side of Rust is just super interesting. And um, I think I said this in some previous uh, stream, but I think that Rust forces me to think in terms of computer science more than any other language that I've ever worked with. I think languages like Clojure and Haskell are great and make me think like a mathematician, but not really like a computer scientist. You're, you're separated so far from the hardware that it really is kind of an applied math exercise, which is fine. I, I was a math major as an undergraduate. I love that. Um, and But I think Rust is interesting because it forces me to think in terms of computing in sophisticated and interesting ways and not in sort of gory, icky ways. Like it's not, like I, I never liked C very much, especially the low level parts of C. The fact that I could just like write a zero to some random piece of memory and watch the world explode was like, oh really? Come on, that doesn't seem good. Um, and Rust, the like the borrow, borrowing and ownership ideas seem to be much more about computer science and the scientific ideas in the programming languages space, but that we're still connected to the machine. There is the idea that there's an actual piece of hardware underneath that's doing this stuff. Um, so I think it's really interesting. And, and I, I'm certainly learning a ton. I mean, I've now been doing this Rust year of programming thing for four months um, with gaps um, now and then, but four months. And I've learned a ton and I really like it. I am not enamored of every feature of Rust. There are parts of Rust that I still find annoying and confusing. Um, but I think that in general, uh, I think it's definitely headed in the right direction and I'm really glad I'm learning it. And I think my students would benefit from knowing more about it. And if I can help them do that, I'm going to consider that a good thing. So, um, that was a long rambly answer. I hope that helped. Um, uh, I should probably wrap up here and let everybody go. And I'm going to go finish putting a couple of plants in the ground um, and sift some compost because that's the other thing. Oh, and then I think I have to build some shelves. I think that's on my list of things to do today. Um, so uh, I'm going to go do those things. You are awesome people. I look forward to seeing you again. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I should be here... Um, uh, I will not have any streams on Saturday, but we should have streams Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Um, and I might try to like squeeze in another stream or two, um, to make up for all the lost streams before we take the two week vacation. Um, but I'll try to keep things posted on the discord. Um, yeah, discord and on the Twitters, and on my schedule here on Twitch. So check those places, and uh, hopefully it'll work out. So um, thanks a lot, everybody. It's been wonderful, and I will see folks later. Ciao!